Welcome back to another episode from the Optimal Body Podcast. I'm Doc Jen. And I'm Dr. Dom. And today we're talking about thoracic outlet syndrome, which we've done before, but we're going to go into a little bit more details on the exercises that you can really benefit from if you implement them, especially if you're having any of that numbness tingling out to the hand. So before we review what thoracic outlet syndrome even is and what causes it and what you should do about it, we just want to make sure that you are subscribed. So please, please hit that subscribe button. Leave comments below about whether it's about this topic or other topics you want us to cover because we cover topics based on your requests. So unless we hear from you, we don't know what you want covered. So please comment below, hit that subscribe button. We have so many more videos other than just uh, educational ones like these that we actually come out with. So you really see movement and you understand better within your body how you can help and just remain pain-free. So thoracic outlet syndrome or TOS, essentially what it is, the compression of the neurovascular bundle mm -hmm. that comes out of our neck and supplies our arm. This is something that, that can be fairly common or people at one point or another might have some sort of symptoms of it because so many nerves, our, our brachial plexus it's called, that kind of is the nervous system that supplies our whole entire arm as well as our subclavian artery and vein. Subclavian basically means it runs below the clavicle. And they all have to come out through this small little gap, the thoracic outlet that lies between our clavicle and our first rib. Clavicle meaning your collarbone. So, you know, especially if you start to feel like you notice when you go into different postures or positions, like if you squeeze your shoulder blades down and back, or if you're reaching overhead for a certain period of time, yeah. or even women or men, <laughs> anyone who's like doing your hair for a long time, right? If, when you have your hand arms overhead and you kind of close off that space between the shoulder blade and that first rib, you kind of get some compression and that could lead to your arm either starting to feel like numbness or tingling, or you start to feel like your your hand is falling asleep, you know, you're losing slight, blood flow. Yeah, slight discoloration yeah. or color changes of one of your limbs, especially the one that might be having some symptoms also. And, and again, this can be caused by so many different ways. There's different functional thoracic outlets where you might just get it more while you're using your arms. Mm -hmm. Um, there's other that are neurogenic or, you know, you have more so from birth, idiopathic, where, you know, there isn't a real known underlying cause. And we go over those a lot more in that first episode with, with thoracic outlet. <laughs> but I also know that Jen has experienced thoracic outlet on occasion before. Yeah, definitely. Which is probably from my scoliosis that I have, but also because I have learned so much within my body, all the yeah. things that we talk about on the podcast and when it comes to breath, when it comes to rib cage, when it comes to movement in general and general awareness yeah. that I don't get these symptoms at all anymore. I don't remember the last time you said anything about it. I don't have any symptoms where before even going into like a down dog position, so that like pike position where your hands and feet are on the floor and your bottom is in the air, even that I would start to get get symptoms. Yeah. Well, and it's just a testament to what we're going to talk about next, which yeah. is the options on how to treat this. Mm -hmm. And of course, there are the conservative options, and then there are people who choose to go the surgical route. And in a lot of the research that we looked into, the outcomes for symptoms and also just longevity, you know, the length of outcomes and, and improvement in symptoms that people felt just seemed to be significantly better on the side of doing conservative treatments. It's most likely around the neck, right? So whether that's, we have what are called our scalenes around our neck so these these muscles around our neck that kind of add in that compression down between into that collarbone area and into that brachial plexus so if we get like spasming or if we're overusing our neck muscles that can add compression there but also based on our structure based on how we use our rib cage based on how we use our shoulder blade that can add compression just there's so many factors that I think it would be so hard for the research to say here is the one protocol that can work. And even though we're going to provide exercises, that's not still the one protocol, you know, no. that can work. These are just exercises that can help bring awareness and exploration of movement so that you can hopefully start to decompress some of the symptoms that you're having. Don't just jump to like, oh, I need surgery to remove my first rib. There's so much more that we can do. And I, and I would say in cases, you know, sometimes it's absolutely necessary. We know someone, she's a professional athlete though, who did need something to change in the 
the immediate. She her did symptoms were really severe. Really severe. She was having and, some scary stuff going on. And stopping her from being able to play. She's a soccer player. So, you know, she needed to have surgery done. And in that case, very important. And, and, and she's been well. able to to work back into She's also function. somebody who, after that surgery, rehabbed the crap out of it. <laughs> oh, and yeah. she's not somebody who's going to ignore, okay, here are the things I can do behaviorally with my mobility, with my breath. Yeah to impact the underlying cause of why that developed. Right. But I just want to say like, we're not against surgery, but especially if you're not a professional athlete who needs like massive change right now, what can you do within your own body that can affect some change before you jump to like maybe the surgical route? One place to just start to pay attention to is our behavior modification throughout the day. So that means we do want to be addressing if I am staying in one static posture all throughout the day, that's probably not going to be the best on anyone's system. So how can yeah. I start to mix up how I'm sitting? So if you have to be in an office, maybe you're opting for a different office chair that's going to create a little bit more core control, or it's just going to put your body in a different position, or maybe you can opt for different chairs. Maybe you can opt for one that's a stool. We love some of the stools from Fully that kind of like puts your body in more of that anterior tilt. So you're sitting more on your sit bones and it naturally yeah. kind of stacks your spine. So maybe you sit in that for a little bit and then go back to your cushion chair. Yeah. And maybe you're getting up throughout the day, the work day a little bit more and doing some chest openers and stretches. And like, how are we breaking up our static posture throughout the day? And that's something to really start to initially address. Yeah, I mean, best positions to the next position. Mm -hmm. How do we get our body to go into different position that's gonna help us kind of re, you know, almost readjust and just reset how we're holding our body. And if we're changing those positions every 30 minutes, that can go a long way to preventing our body from wanting to just kind of harden down in one position. And, mm -hmm. and many of us who are just in one position for the majority of the day are working in that forward position, might be breathing a little more into the chest, which is the next thing we want to talk about breath. Go in front of a mirror. Like if you can remember to do this pretty immediately, go in front of a mirror, sit down comfortably and take some deep breaths. Long, slow inhales, long, slow exhales. Where do you see your neck muscles turning on to assist? And when I say long, slow, I don't mean like the deepest breaths that you can take, but just nice, slow, relaxed breathing. Where does your body normally catch on? And if your neck is turning on or your shoulders look like they elevate even just a little bit, if you have that vertical motion when we're breathing, then we know that we're kind of reducing some space and we're creating some tension up around the neck, we're turning on the neck muscles, which is only going to shorten in that space. But if you had your elbow up on something and you just lifted and kind of like took off some slack from that shoulder area, that neck area, and could like relax and breathe into that, that's just like an indicator for your nervous system right then to like take off tension from those nerves and tell your body that it's okay and it's safe, you know? Yeah. So especially in like those short-term immediate like relief symptoms if you're feeling any kind of sensation out in the arm or the neck and like just just try elevating that elbow and relaxing and seeing if if elevating that shoulder passively kind of helps to take off pressure and you notice a change in your symptoms and that's a big indicator that you probably have thoracic outlet syndrome and, and these exercises and the breath work especially is going to be so key in in what we start to go into how can i introduce more postures throughout the day Day. So I'm not just staying in that one. So I think going right back to what you said about the chairs and can I have a chair that I sit on? Can I have a chair that I can then elevate and have kind of a standing stool that I'm just leaning against? Can I then put my knee on the chair and have mm -hmm. like kind of a standing but kneeling on one knee position? And that's really going to have a lot of an impact on us just changing up the overall environment, changing up our pelvic positioning, being in different positions throughout the day. To me, that's posture. That's focusing on our posture dynamically over an eight to 12 hour period. One way that you can do this is just like if we kind of relax the shoulder down, so not forcing it down because that's going to also put some pressure down into that thoracic outlet area. But if we just relax the shoulder down, bring the arm out to the side and then just lightly tap the fingers back. And then from there, see how much I can start to extend the arm and then bring it back down. Extend the arm right until I feel some of that sensation down into like my arm or my neck or my fingertips. It's going to be a different place for everybody, but just kind of like this is already some tensioning and if that's too much you can actually bend your neck towards your hand and then go into those glides because the bending the neck in is going to help to 
take some pressure and tension off of that nerve so yep. that we're not putting so much tension as we kind of floss that nerve through the system. Even if you just have your arm out to the side and try bending your fingers back towards you, right? And even there, you might start to feel some tension through the arm. The next step would be to kind of bend the elbow and you're almost gonna try to put your palm on your face, almost like you're putting those upside down goggles on yourself. You don't need a lot of them, like 10 throughout the day kind of thing. It's just a way to start to move the nerve tissue through our other soft tissue, so through our and muscles if you're, and if stuff. If you're finding a lot of tightness, that tells us that for some reason that nerve doesn't have a lot of mobility. Yeah. And that's likely to do with our daily behaviors. We have to address, you know, how much am I sleeping? Am I getting good sleep? Am I hydrating throughout the day? Am I getting good nutrients within my body? Or am I eating a lot of stuff that I know <laughs> makes me feel a little bit more inflamed? Am I eating a lot of processed foods? Am I eating a lot of processed sugars and all that kind of stuff? Am I drinking a lot of sodas right now? When I've had patients and we work through this, a lot of the times we are working on those behavior modifications as well with yeah. what we're putting in our body because it does have an impact on what we feel throughout the day. Taking those forearms and you're literally like a plank on the wall and then you press your elbows into the wall and as you press your elbows, your chest kind of comes forward but your hips are gonna come back so you barely bend at your knees and you allow your hips to come back. And what we're doing when we're doing that is we're gliding the shoulder blade forward. We're turning on that serratus anterior muscle and then when we take deep breaths, we expand from that rib cage. So we're getting that rib cage expansion, that thoracic extension, and then we're increasing the scapular control. And all of this is going to help to take pressure off of what happens around the neck. So this is one of my favorite ways, my favorite exercises to start to tap into reprogramming and relearning how to use that body. Doing thoracic rotation with band wrapped around the ribs, mm, which is something we've, such a you know, good one. something we've done a lot, but that band helps give great feedback for you to breathe into as you're doing this thoracic rotation. So you can either do this in a position kind of like the open book, like I mentioned before, or in kneeling. And when you're kneeling, you're kind of more in space. So it mm -hmm. makes you have more of that control from your pelvis to your rib cage yourself as you're opening up into that thoracic rotation. Great way to start developing this with more resistance. Yeah, because then our, that band around that low rib cage is, is a reminder for the brain of to where to breathe yeah rather than the neck right so that's where we we just get such better opening around that core control rather than that neck again creating more space and work into that thoracic rotation and it's going to help you focus on a nice stable core breathing into that low rib cage getting that thoracic mobility and then switching sides and this is where we really start to challenge those arms to do some work you're not overhead quite yet. You're, right. you're kind of just at your chest level. So again, overhead tends to be the position that provokes the thoracic outlet. But then if we take it one step further and go from that knee hover quadruped position and almost press back into a down dog, that's when we start getting those arms overhead. Mm -hmm. And that's when people mostly feel the symptoms is yeah. anything starting to go overhead, right? And so reprogramming how your shoulder blades move, how you're expanding from the rib cage, we start to just create so much more space for that neck rather than just doing neck stretches or like <laughs> getting massage. <laughs> yeah, like if you're going to just stretch your neck, well, then what happens when we go back to the same positions or the same exercises we were doing before? Get back in a car or anything yeah. that kind of, again, these behaviors that perpetuate our body to respond in a certain way. So all of these different categories of behavior change, posture, focusing mo on mobility in your rib cage, mm -hmm. in your thoracic spine, around your shoulder blades, working on nerve mobility, all different things that we should be paying attention to if you're starting to get some of these symptoms of thoracic outlet syndrome. And literally we do have a neck and upper back plan on Gen Health that goes yeah. through everything we just talked about. Literally everything we just talked about is in the neck and upper back plan. So if you know you suffer with symptoms of TOS, of thoracic outlet syndrome, or you feel that numbness tingling through the arm, or you feel that restriction when you go overhead, get into the neck and upper back plan. They're two week plans. There's three phases of it. And it walks you through a day to day plan that isn't yeah. going to take you more than 10 to 15 minutes to start to tap into these exercises. I mean, it's a two week plan and you get the first week for free <laughs> when exactly. you join. So check it out. And like Jen said, it's five to 10 minutes a day. And some of the exercises on certain days will be those ones that jump out at you like, mm -hmm. oh my gosh, this is where I'm restricted. And that's the lead you should take. It might be one or two of these different areas that we talked about yeah. that really click for you. Mm -hmm.
Thanks for joining us again for another PT Pearl all about the tingling that you might get from thoracic outlet syndrome. Is this something you've experienced before? Did you learn anything new or do you have anything you want us to cover in more depth? Please comment below so we know what you're thinking. Make sure to hit that subscription button and the notification bell so you don't miss out on future pearls and videos that we come out with. Thank you.